Hey everyone, Very Vague here, and in this video I want to give you an overview of digital fashion. Firstly, what it is, and then secondly, some of the techniques and tools we can use for how to create it, and end up with something like this guy here. So I'm sure many of you have either seen or heard about digital fashion in recent years. Whether it be from the recent hype of the metaverse and the platforms emerging from it, or through the actual fashion world itself, with big name brands having to adapt to alternative methods during COVID in order to showcase their latest collections. The chosen medium mainly seeming to come in the form of more game-like experiences, like this one titled Afterworld by Balenciaga. Presenting us with an albeit simple, but extremely effective first-person style viewing experience, where we see for the first time fashion designs showcased to us in an entirely 3D format which is something you could say has been a long time coming, with most other design fields adopting 3D methods of representation from the early 2000s. But this of course can be attributed in part to the more tactile nature of designing clothes, as well as the technological limitations of replicating fabrics and stitchings, as really only up until relatively recently has both the hardware and software progressed to a point that is intuitive and time manageable to work with but it can also probably be attributed to a broader realisation by these fashion houses that they don't have to operate within the strict confines of physical materials anymore. Given the rise of more hybridised methods of self-expression, such as AR filters, editing apps, and of course the cash cow of virtual merch and wearables for online games. Choosing to tap into a generation that was raised on character customization and virtual alter egos. And with recent reports showing just how damaging and wasteful the fashion industry is at large, it's no surprise companies as big as Nike are already fully embracing this next hybridised step, acquiring some of the biggest startups in the space like Artifact and its associated virtual marketplaces. So with that being said, what I really want this video to act as is a resource you can keep coming back to, not just for technical purposes, but also for a stylistic guide as well as I'll be covering both the nitty gritty technical steps of how we can create and simulate clothes in Blender, but whilst also trying to make you aware of the sort of garment or designs each tool might lead to. So to start with, there's really only two key ways we can go about making digital fashion in 3D. The first would be like what Balenciaga has used here, which is photogrammetry which you can basically think of as a 3D photograph in that it stitches together a bunch of images taken in real life and then using various softwares generates this into a baked 3D model that will end up looking something like this. Then for the second technique, this will involve us actually 3D modeling our clothes manually and then running a cloth simulation on it so that it will simulate onto our avatar. And although this may seem like a more complex way of doing things, anyone who's tried the first method will know it is by no means a seamless process and usually requires a lot of cleanup work for the model and textures after the initial scan. So unless you're intentionally going for a more low res game style aesthetic, I would really recommend using this second method as it has much more advantages and versatility and will give our clothes much more accurate, lifelike results, especially when we begin adding avatar movement into the mix, like you can see here. So to start using this technique, let's first come across into Blender and open up a new scene. And then the first thing we're going to want to do is add in an avatar so that our clothes are going to have something to simulate on top of in 3D. And these are really easy to find for free online, so I'll link some good places to find those in the description, as well as my own template pack here, which has a whole bunch of simple but diverse avatars to get you started. Now for the cloth itself, I'm going to start off by just adding in a simple mesh plane and renaming this to something like base garment, before then moving it above our avatar's head using the shortcut G. Next, to turn our mesh plane into a cloth simulation, all we need to do is come across to our modifiers tab and then select the cloth option. From here, we can now come down into our physics tab where we'll see some more detailed settings for our cloth, which I'll run through in a second what all of these mean. 
But first, in order to just see how our cloth is simulating straight off the bat, let's just go ahead and press spacebar to begin our animation. And as you'll see, our garment is just going to go straight through our avatar. And this is because, just like how we had to add in a cloth modifier to tell Blender which objects we want to be enabled as cloth, we also have to tell it which ones we want to act as a collision in our simulation. So we can do this by first selecting our avatar and then coming across into the physics properties and assigning it this collision option. And then if we go ahead and press play, we'll see that it's now intersecting as intended. But what we will notice is it's still not looking very cloth-like. And this is because we need to actually add more faces to our base plane as essentially how Blender is treating it at the moment is just one big single face. So we can do this by coming over to our Modifiers tab and adding in a subdivision surface modifier that we'll set to Simple. And now what we can see that's going to do is every time we increase this value, it's going to add in another row of mesh faces on our base garment. And so we can really think of this as basically the resolution for our cloth simulation. So we'll want to make sure this is put before our cloth modifier, so the simulation will now run with our subdivided mesh. And now, as you can see, the higher number we set this to, the more detailed and accurate our result is going to be. But keep in mind here, this will also mean it will take longer to simulate. So my advice would be a good rule of thumb is to try and get your subdivision grid to around 10 centimeters or so per square as I think this is a good in-between of producing relatively detailed results, but still lightweight enough that it's not going to take you 20 minutes to simulate every frame. So I'm then going to scale down the size of our base garment a little bit before then applying our subdivision modifier so I can delete some of these faces here to make some space for our head to slot through. I'm then going to add in another subdivision modifier till I'm happy with the simulation quality of our cloth. Then from here a good trick to use to smooth out our result is to add in another subdivision modifier, but this time placing it on top of our cloth modifier so it won't slow down our simulation at all and will only refine the resulting mesh. We can then get rid of this ugly rectangular shading by coming up to our object rollout and selecting the shade smooth option. And then something I also like to do here is come down to the object properties on our avatar and set this to a different color just so we can see everything a bit clearer in the viewport. And now we can see we're getting a nice clean result that's running fast and optimized. From here we can begin to look in more detail at the simulation properties of our cloth itself and what all these physics settings actually mean. So the first one being quality steps here, which is pretty self-explanatory. It just means the higher you put this value, the more time Blender is going to spend calculating each frame, resulting in more accurate results. But generally I find the default value of five works pretty well most of the time. So I'd only increase this if you're getting really unstable results. Next is the speed multiplier. So the value of one being real time, then with lower or higher values, either slowing down or increasing the time scale of the simulation. So I actually find Blender's default value of one always looks a bit too fast and exaggerated for my liking. So I usually like to pull this down to between about 0.5 and 0.8, which I find looks more natural. Vertex mass, you can think of as the weight of our cloth. So the higher we make this value, the more it's going to begin to sag like so. Then for the stiffness and damping settings here, these are going to act as the fabric type of our cloth. So for example, the difference between something like a silk versus a leather. So the higher we put these values, the stiffer the fabric will become, and inversely, the lower we put them, the more loose and stretchy it's going to act. And Blender also has some great preset fabric options up here under the three dots icon. Next, we can look at pressure, which will basically control the inflation of our cloth. So this will come in handy if you're looking to create something like a life jacket or a puffer vest and so on. But for this to work properly, what we'll really want is to have a closed mesh so it balloons out properly. 
So we can do this by hitting tab to come into edit mode before then extruding all our faces using the shortcut E. And now we'll see if we simulate it and start to increase this pressure value, we're going to get that desired effect. Then for collisions, we can look in more detail at how our cloth is intersecting with other objects. So by default, Blender makes this distance value quite large, so you might notice your cloth sitting a fair bit off your avatar like so. So I'd recommend lowering this right down until it looks more realistic. We'll also want to ensure this self collisions box is checked so that our cloth intersects with itself too when it folds. So now for shape which is just going to allow us to pin or hold up certain parts of our cloth. So in order to do this, we'll first want to come into edit mode and assign the edges or faces we wish to hold up to a new vertex group. Then from here, all we have to do is come back to our shape settings and under the pin group option, select the group we just created. And now we can see that simulates accordingly. Then finally, for the property and field weight settings, these are just going to control how much our cloth object is affected by external forces, such as gravity, wind, or any other physics you might wish to add to your scene. So I'm just going to leave these all at one for now, but I'd recommend lowering the gravity value if you ever find your cloth is falling off your avatar too easily. So from here, now that we have a pretty good understanding of what all these simulation settings do, we can begin to look at constructing some more interesting garments for our avatar. So let's say we wanted to create a simple long sleeve top. What we could do is using our existing poncho thing we've made here, come into edit mode and then delete these corner faces, which will leave us with a result, which we can now think of as the front, back and sides of our top. Then pressing O, to enable proportional editing mode, we can then begin to drag these different parts roughly into place. Before then extruding and merging the vertices of our mesh using their respective shortcuts E and M to block out a basic form. Essentially you want to keep this mesh as simple as possible in this blocking stage, so it'll be easier to manipulate and adjust later once we start subdividing it and simulating. Think RuneScape level quality here for the time being. So then once we've got our low res mesh, we can then begin switching back on our subdivision modifiers to get a better idea of how it's going to sit on our avatar. From here, it's really just a refining process of simulating and tweaking our RuneScape mesh until we get the result we're after. And I kind of see this workflow as an iterative one whereby I'll just create duplicates of my cloth object as I go to create different base garments. And then once you're ready to take your base garments to the next stage of detail, we can begin adding even further to our garment using a really awesome tool Blender has called Surface Deform, which is basically going to allow us to use our base cloth object here as a guide for objects with much more complex geometry. So to demonstrate here, if I were to go in and add some pockets and zippers on top of our hoodie, rather than have to combine these with our original object and try to cook up some monumentally complex cloth simulation, what we can actually do is just assign them this surface to form modifier and press bind. And voila, now we can see that's following our cloth down and sitting on the avatar like so. And just to show it even clearer and how effective it works, if I were to just delete my avatar for a second and simulate, we'll see it deforms exactly with our mesh at no extra speed or CPU cost. So as long as our new detailed geometry is in the general proximity of our base deform mesh, it should work just as well as our original cloth simulation. And in the case we might want to add in some more dynamic elements, like say these drawstrings here for example, which we'd probably expect to be bouncing around on their own accord once our avatar starts to move, we can actually just go back to our original cloth object and add in some simple extrusions approximating them 
for the cloth simulation. Just make sure to unbind and rebind every time we make any changes to either mesh. Then what I like to do from here, now that our base garment is really only acting as an ugly low poly guide for our higher res objects, I'm also actually going to create a copy for this as well, so we can have a nice high res sculpted version, without the stuff we don't want to show. Then we can apply some subdivisions to it, before coming into sculpting mode and refining it. And my personal favourite tools to use here are the draw, grab and smooth tools. I find I can manipulate the mesh to look exactly how I want, really just using these three. And then using this surface deform method, we can just continue detailing our outfit, as we really have no limitations on its complexity. As you can see here, we can even add details as small and intricate as stitching, and larger like more high poly trims such as carabiners, buckles and so on. And if you're interested in using any of these trim elements I'm using here, I'll have them, as well as a ton of base garments and clothes I've created, available in my Very Basics pack, now on Gumroad. So this will have just about every type of clothing item, accessory or material ready to use and customise for your own projects. So be sure to check that out if you want a big head start in this type of work. So then I just continued detailing my top garment here, and even added in this tactical vest over the top. Again using the proportional editing tool to just adjust it into place on top of our hoodie. And another handy tool to use here, if we want to give some thickness to certain fabrics or parts of our garment, is the solidify modifier, which we can assign to the whole garment or just to certain vertex groups, like so. So this will really just add that extra layer of realism, especially in our close-up renders. Next I moved on to the pants, which was a similar process of starting with a really simple base fitting garment, which I then duplicated and subdivided for our high res mesh, that we can again apply a surface deform modifier to, before then proceeding to edit our pants in more detail. So for me I wanted to create a kind of layered weaving effect for these pants, so I just started cutting away at them using the knife tool and then added in some overlapping faces to achieve this look. Then from here it's probably a good idea to add in some shoes, so we can begin finessing the fit of the bottom of the pants. So I just added in these chunky style boots here, which we'll want to make sure we apply a collision property to in our physics tab, so we get these interacting with our base cloth. And just to make things difficult, I decided I wanted to add in this kind of sculptural piping, interweaving in between the pants and my avatar's shoes and ankles, to see how far I could push the simulation. And it actually worked pretty well. You just want to make sure if you're doing more complex collisions like these, to leave a little bit of wiggle room between your cloth and intersecting geometry. So at least a centimetre or two. Then I just continued detailing my pants, like how I did earlier for my hoodie. Adding in some loose straps and a variety of trim objects. So now our outfit and simulation is all set up and looking relatively high tech, we can begin to make the cloth look a bit more interesting by adding in some movement for our avatar into the mix. So the easiest way to do this, without having to become a wizard at character rigging and animation, is to just export our avatar and its associated collision objects to an OBJ file. That we're then going to import into a website called Mixamo, which is going to do all the hard work for us. And we can just simply choose from a whole range of these animations here to apply to our avatar. So if we then download this, and then re-import it back into our Blender file, we'll see we now have our walking cycle here, which is great. 
but you'll notice that if we turn back on our cloth sim, it's not going to be lining up with our new animation. So to fix this, it's pretty easy. We'll just want to first select the armature, which is controlling the animation, and then come into pose mode here. Then with all our bones selected, we'll just move the walking cycle keyframes up about 20 or so frames. Before then coming up to our pose dropdown and clearing all transforms, so we get it resetting to the original A pose we had it in. Now we can just insert a keyframe using the shortcut I at our first frame, which should hopefully give us enough space to transition from a static pose into the walking cycle for our cloth simulation to handle. Nice. Now we can move on to my personal favorite part, which is adding some materiality to our clothes and beginning to really bring our scene to life. So the first thing we're going to want to do is go ahead and switch into our rendered mode. Before then coming down here into our world tab and assigning it an environment or HDRI texture so things are looking a bit less dull. Then from here what I like to do is just add in a plane, extrude it at one end, which we can then bevel using control B and scroll to give ourselves a nice seamless backdrop for our renders. Next, we can begin experimenting with materials for our outfit. So let's go ahead and open up a new window for our shader editor and add in a new material for our hoodie. And really, the only three sliders you want to worry about tweaking here for the time being are the base color, specular, and roughness nodes. So color is pretty self-explanatory. Then specular is basically whether the fabric is reflective or not. So one being very reflective and zero being completely diffuse. Then the roughness value takes this one step further and will control the actual shininess of the reflections. So the lower you set this value to, the more glossy and shiny your reflections are going to be. So you could think about it as being the difference between something like a latex material versus a rough leather. And for me, I'm actually gonna play around with this metallic value here too, as I think it could be cool to have a kind of silvery polished finish, as it's not something you would generally see on clothes in real life. Then the next thing we can look at is using image textures, which are really useful for replicating fabrics like this nylon here, for example, and pretty much anything else you can think of that has some form of repeating pattern or stitching in it. We can even customize our image textures by using things like a math node to multiply them with a color. Or if we want more specific mapping of textures, like on these buckles here, for example, we can just come across to our UV editing tab, and if we press the shortcut U, we'll get a whole bunch of these options for different ways to unwrap or map it. One of my favorites to use here is the project from view option, which I find is a really quick and easy way to line things up like so. And then yeah, from here, I just continued texturing my outfit using these methods, until I ended up with a result that felt like it had a relatively digital aesthetic and that probably would have been very tricky to explore in real life, or at least without a lot more waste to the environment. So yeah, I hope this video has inspired you and maybe opened up new horizons for some of you in your work or art. And if you are more interested in this realm of work, I'll have a whole bunch of artists to check out here and get inspired from too as the possibilities really are limitless in terms of what you can create using these techniques. And as I mentioned in the video, make sure to check out my Very Basics pack, as it's a great resource for anyone involved in 3D, and also just a really great way of supporting the channel and these videos. So thanks for watching, feel free to post any questions or requests you might have in the comments, and I'll see you in the next one.